Hi there, Jim here. Today in the lab, we're going to have a look at this Sunshine DT17N digital multimeter. This is a bit of a lesser known brand, but I have seen it in a few places on YouTube. And so I thought, uh, let's give it a try. It's an inexpensive model. It should be fairly full featured and should do all of the things that, uh, that one might need for a typical kind of hobbyist application. So we'll, we'll have a look at that. Looks like a nice meter. Uh, I purchased this uh, with my own funds on AliExpress. Now, if you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Questions and comments are always welcome. The feedback is appreciated and it helps me figure out where I should be focusing my activity. Let's get into the box. So there's a user manual here and not a very big manual, but it's about 12, oh no, 14 pages. And, oh, I see the first half is in Chinese. So the, uh, about half of it is in English. And so it's very, uh, very small text, uh, very kind of condensed information, but it's got all the basics in here. In any case, multimeters are generally not all that hard to figure out. So we've got the meter itself in a plastic bag that I'm going to need to cut open. So that's a new one. I guess that ensures that we know for sure that it's the first time and there's a, uh, a quality certificate from Sunshine and a warranty card. So that's also a little different. And the meter itself, it's a uh, fairly lightweight, nothing unusual there. This rubber gasket looks like it does come off and we will have to put the batteries in in a minute. And in the box here, a bunch of stuff here. So there's a temperature probe, and this is sort of the typical probe on a wire thermocouple. So the thermocouple is a tiny little dot at the end. So you can see there. That's a thermocouple. So that's fairly common kind of thermocouple probe. And we've got a set of probes here. Standard PVC wire. Um, once again, these are actually branded with, uh, with Sunshine. So that's interesting. And the probes have a very sharp tip, and that's the only option we have. So they're not interchangeable. And once you take this little tip off, you've got this long exposed section. So these are probably not rated for uh, Cat 4, and we wonder about Cat 3 even. Typically, when uh, the higher ratings the only piece exposed is the very tip of the probe. So that's um, that's a little different, but uh, but serviceable. And the probe tips do appear to be gold plated, so that's a nice thing for work on um, sort of electronics, small scale electronics. Uh, these probes should be fine. They probably wouldn't be great for high voltage applications, though. And so that's it. Not a lot in the box, but there doesn't really need to be. We will do most of the tests with the, uh, with the default probes. Now let's look at getting the batteries in. Well, the screw doesn't have anything to retain it on the inside. So you have to be careful not to lose the screw, but it uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem. So we've got the battery compartment open. And nice to see the threaded ring there, always good there. And it takes uh, 
a 9 volt battery. Now I was a little bit thrown off initially by these uh, ridges here, which seem to be designed to hold sort of the loop around for a pair of AA batteries, but uh, it does take a 9 volt battery. And so got a 9 volt battery here and it sort of slots in there. You can see it beeped or hear that it beeped. Uh, it's in the on mode. The positioning of the battery is not very solid. And you can kind of hear, well now it's off, even though it should be on. When I get better contact made here, you can hear that it turn, powers on again. And so I'm just going to stuff something in the back end here, just to make sure that the battery contacts stay pushed up against the contacts from the device. Um, otherwise, I don't want it to be kind of turning on and off on me randomly while we're going through the tests. So I've got a little piece of foam just at the base there to keep pressure against the battery to keep make sure it has good solid force between the battery contacts and the multimeter contacts. Now let's close it up. Okay, and it's on. Let's power it up. Okay, so it turns on, so that's a good sign. Battery works, and let's put it through its paces. So we're gonna start with DC voltage. We've got a reference source here, and the reference, exact reference values are up in the overlay. So this is 2.5 volts, 5 volts, 7.5 volts, and 10 volts. So we can see pretty, pretty good readings there on the voltage. Very nice. Now for AC voltage, I'm going to compare against this Fluke 117 because I don't have an AC reference source. So we'll just see how the two track and the Fluke is pretty accurate. So right now the power is off, so we're seeing a little bit of ghost voltage. So that was on. You can see that the voltage is pretty close to what the Fluke is showing, maybe off by a tenth of a volt. Now let's just check the response time. So that's off, on. So just a little bit slower than the Fluke, but still pretty good. Nothing to complain about there. For resistance, I've got a reference board here, and the actual values are going to be in the overlay, but I'll call them out as I'm doing them here. So this is 10 ohms, 100 ohms, 1K, 10K, and 100K. So all in all, pretty close. Good, good readings, good performance there. Looking at capacitance, the values from the reference will be up in the overlay, and I'll just call these out again. 100 picofarads. So that's pretty far off. This is one nanofarad. This is a hundred, no, oh, sorry, 10 nanofarads. A hundred nanofarads. A thousand nanofarads. And 10 microfarads. Okay. So the readings there were pretty good, except it does seem to have some trouble at the lower end with the 100 picofarad. So that might be out of the range for this particular meter. Now we're going to have a look at diode check. And I have this test box. And really in diode check, I'm looking to just see what the behavior is of the meter in, these ver in this mode. So let's put the probe in here. 
Okay, so that reads about right, but you'll notice there's no beep sound there. That reads about fine as well. That lights the diode up, that lights it up, lights it up faintly, that lights it up nicely, that lights it up, and the short. So they all work, but there's no sound emitted by the unit. And that means if you were trying to go through a lot of things quickly on a board, you'd have to be looking at the display in order to see what's going on. And so that's a bit of a disappointment for the unit. Now I'm gonna look at continuity and my typical test for continuity is to just slap the probes together. So performance of continuity is really nice and that's probably a product of the gold tipped probes. So very, very good, very good performance in continuity mode. For non-contact voltage, I take this uh, plug and I bring it to where the non-contact sensor is, but it's not clear where the non-contact sensor is here. And it also seems that it's sort of picking some stray stuff up. I'm not exactly sure why. I don't have any probes plugged in here at the moment because that sometimes can affect these things. And this is the hot wire and so that wire is over here. So let's see if it can... So it does pick something up, but it's, uh, it, you know, it also seems to pick up something when I squeeze it, which is a little bit odd. Uh, so I'm a little bit concerned about the non-contact voltage operation there. For hot wire detection, we plug a probe in here and then, so we can see that we've got a probe plugged in there and that seems to operate as a bit of an antenna as well. Anyways, uh, so that's sort of ghost voltage on the ground, ghost voltage on the neutral, but you can see that's the hot, so. So the hot detection works okay, except for the hot, the non-contact voltage, which is a little bit of a weird behavior. For DC current measurement, I've got a little test circuit. We have to wire the meter in in series with the rest of the circuit. I've got a five volt source and a 150 ohm resistor. If we use Ohm's law to calculate that out, we know or we can calculate that that should give us about 33 milliamps of current or 0 0.033 amps. And we'll do this first in the amp range and then we'll shift over to the milliamps. So I've turned the power on now and so you can see we're getting about 31 milliamps there. So a little low but but not too major, nothing to really be concerned about. Now I'm just going to move the probe, I'm going to pull this out, turn over to milliamps, plug in here, and now we're seeing 31.33. So pretty consistent between the amp range and the milliamp range. So happy to see the consistency there. But uh, typically I see something a little bit closer to 32 milliamps, but once again, like I said, not really a big deal. Now for temperature, I've plugged in the thermocouple and I've moved into the temperature setting and I'm just gonna grab the thermocouple. So that's pretty responsive, pretty quick to respond. The readings kind of make typical sense for what I can do with my fingertips. So I think the temperature sensing uh, probably works fine. Nothing to be concerned about there. Some other features that I'm not gonna go through testing because they're not all that 
interesting. They work the way you'd expect them to. There's a hold function. There's, that works the way you expect it. There's a backlight, which is not super bright, but probably bright enough it was really dark in where you are. Turn that off. You can do manual range selection. You can, there's a, a relative function so that you can, uh, if you've got some leads or something that are not, uh, that if you have some leads that have a little bit of resistance to them, you could sort of zero out the resistance on those leads with the relative function. When you're in uh, AC voltage, I didn't show this in AC voltage, but in AC voltage, you can get the frequency of the AC uh, with this Hertz button over here, and there's a dedicated Hertz setting over there, and a max min uh, function for max and min hold. So uh, a variety of sort of uh, common additional features that, uh, that we'd see on a lot of these meters. A quick look on the inside. So we see here, this is a DMM 9701. It's essentially uh, an application specific chip that is uh, specific to this meter or this series of meters. So it's not a general purpose uh, DMM chip. And this one is uh, an HE24CO8. So that's uh, some flash memory. There's about 1K uh, of flash memory there. There's a temperature sensor there, the battery contacts that we see there. Then a good fuse here. So uh, both of these fuses are ceramic type fuses, you know, some large over voltage. This fuse shouldn't make a huge mess inside. But one of the things that's not anywhere here, there, there are no MOVs in the system. So uh, voltage surges could cause wreak havoc uh, on the meter. And also up here, we can see some test points that uh, we could probably hook up some sort of a communication line to. Not that uh, I'm going to do that. And nowhere, which kind of explains the behavior of the non-contact voltage, it's hard to exactly see, at least on this side of the board, uh, where any non-contact voltage sensor might be. There's sort of a, let's say, a wiggle here. Maybe, you know, there's an antenna there. Maybe not. Hard to say. It was sort of sensitive to this region. So maybe that's the non-contact sensor. And that's all there is to it, really. There's just not a lot in the, in the unit here. In summary, it's a decent multimeter. The performance, in terms of the measurement, the accuracy, was reasonable and reasonably responsive. A nice set of sharp probes that are also gold-plated, so they perform very well when you're testing your circuit. So the probes are, are positive. Now, the fuses inside the unit, we saw that good set of fuses that shouldn't make a huge mess if, uh, if disaster were to strike. So good to see that on the inside. But on the flip side, we've got uh, a lack of MOVs inside the unit, so voltage surges could... Uh, wreak havoc on the unit because of uh, the lack of any MOVs inside. Now, on terms of performance, we saw the non-contact voltage had a little bit of weird operation, uh, didn't respond so well, responded to kind of stray signals and things like that. So not a lot of confidence for me with the non-contact voltage. And then lastly, some disappointment with the diode check mode because it didn't have that uh, beep sound for the valid functioning diodes and the short sound if you've hit a short circuit. And that, like I said during the rest of the video, that helps avoid needing to kind of constantly be looking at the display in order to tell what's going on when you're testing a circuit. So those, the, the sounds in the diode check is probably the biggest negative for me when it comes to using this, uh, this meter. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and until next time.